In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I want to tell you some very exciting news today. We're in difficult times, and we need to hear good news. Today is Friday of Clean Week, and I just celebrated the, the pre-sanctified liturgy and really didn't hear much about the commemoration today. But it's the commemoration on the 6th of March of the 40 Martyrs of Amorium. And there's several names there, but the most important one to me is Theodore. And you'll find out why in a minute. And you'll also find out why in a minute that I pray to Theodore now, starting today. He's in my list of saints that I do a prostration to, and I would recommend that you do it too. You asked me about where to find it. It's online. I would recommend very much that you would have your list of favorite saints, and perhaps it'll be the same as mine. Maybe it'll be different that you ask their prayers every single day. So, apologize. I think I'm pretty much going to read it because I just wrote this out and it's in my document. So these glorious martyrs were all government officials who were put in prison by the Caliph after he conquered the town of Amorium in Upper Phrygia. The town was overcome through the treachery of an apostate Christian named Babzides. All the others, save the traitor, were put to death by the sword, including even innocent peasants who sought refuge in the town. The 42 nobles were shut up in a dark prison, and they were given moldy bread infrequently, although one of their number was uh, occasionally authorized to beg on the streets for food. They were left in this condition for years until their clothes rotted off their backs and their bodies were attacked by vermin. The Caliph promised them their lives if they would pretend to convert in a public prayer. As one man, they refused. They asked the Caliph if he was in their position, what would he do? Would he agree to a feigned con conversion? And he replied, well, certainly, because there's nothing more important than liberty. So in this way, he was like another Caiaphas who unwittingly prophesied truly. There is nothing more important than liberty, Christian liberty, the liberty of the soul, total freedom from darkness and from passions, and God's light illuminating us, bringing perfect peace and perfect knowledge and perfect freedom. Many people were sent to them to promise them all kinds of fleshly things and pleasures in this life and in the next, if they would even pretend to convert to Mohammedism. They consistently refused all these blandishments, and they prayed the Psalter and other services as they were able in their conditions. They were in a state like this for seven years. Seven years. Perhaps you could do this for seven days, seven months, seven years. Until they were informed the day before by the traitor Babzidis that they were going to be executed. So on the day of their execution, they were brought, brought to the bank of the Euphrates, and there was a large group of Saracens because they wanted to see the show. And the officer first summoned Protospasarius Theodor Craterius and proclaimed loudly to everyone that he was a lapsed priest who had become a soldier and therefore had killed many men. And therefore, the officer urged Theodore to ask for Muhammad's help and mercy since he had already denied Christ and had no hope of mercy from him. Theodore replied, On the contrary, precisely because of all this, I must shed my blood now for him, that he may forgive my sins. And after a short prayer, he bowed his head, and he was beheaded, and all the other martyrs followed, without any fear or hesitation. Let's look at Theodore. He was an apostate from his calling, who the heretical Saracens, and probably not a few Christians, thought was beyond redemption. Let's not mince words here. There must have been some terrible reason why Theodore reneged on his priesthood. Doing such a thing would cause massive injury to the soul. He likely became a very worldly man, since after offering the unbloody sacrifice, he participated in the bloody killing of enemies as a soldier. He must have been a good soldier because he was rewarded with a high rank, the Protospatharius rank was coveted by all and given to senior generals and provincial governors and, general, uh, and uh, important dignitaries. 
They had a seat in the Senate and they lived a lavish and an opulent lifestyle. We may surmise that Peter, or excuse me, Theodore, was living in a secular way. This does not malign his memory at all, it makes him greater. And perhaps he felt that he had no possibility of redemption because he had fallen so far. But God's mercy is not only beyond our own, but it's even inconceivable to us. The former fallen priest and secular man Theodore became a luminous martyr, and all of his sins were washed away in a moment. In our day, it's likely that this scenario of a priest losing his way will happen again. Many, many times. We live in very trying times. There are spirit, there's a spiritual deadness in the air. And sometimes it's even among the clergy. There are political intrigues and manipulations, schism and heresy, prowling about like a roaring lion ready to devour the church or at least the weak in her. Some will doubtlessly lose their way and fall very far. Perhaps one of these would be me, a poor sinful priest. This is why I pray to the luminous martyr Theodore. There is no sin that we cannot repent from. The pain of martyrdom is only a moment, but the pain of eternal apostasy is forever. God will never abandon us, even if we have abandoned hope for ourselves. Let us remember that, not only for apostate priests, but anyone who's apostatized from the church or perhaps even never known the truth. We all know people that have fallen far, but God's mercy can reach anybody. We should be doing prostrations for those who we love who have fallen far, believing that, like Theodore, they can make amends, even if it's at the last moment of their life. Holy Martyr Theodore, praying to God for us. May God bless you and help you in all things. Amen.